Welcome back to the shop. Today we're talking about a tool post grinder. Well, this stuff doesn't really look like a tool post grinder. Well, there are probably a zillion methods of uh, tool post grinding. Um, they all have one thing in common. Big, no? And I've seen all of them. It's all not very practical. You can even go bigger. Somehow, maybe, I don't know. Take that one. I don't know. Or nothing. things like that. With the grinding wheel on it, everything is possible. Whereas this one is not a bad solution, actually. <laughs> uh, if you just do a bit of surface grinding on a on a shaft or and, and it's short, but again, all these methods have one thing in common: they are way too big. The whole idea actually started when I bought one of these motors and a speed controller which are actually for model aircraft um, for a completely different application which uh, at the end didn't happen so I thought these motors are quite powerful for the size so I bought, bought one of these shanks and thought there might be a way to attach that somehow to that motor and make a really small, tiny corpus grinder. <coughs> so I came up with this idea. Don't know if that's visible, should it be? Um, just a rough sketch. So I went to the junk box and looked for some bits. So what we're gonna do is we take a box standard post holder, fit our tool post grinder, and it comes with a tool post. You can take it out, put it back in. Change the angle, do whatever you like, and the repeatability is very good. And that's how it looks like at the end. It's not fully finished right now, but it works. So it's about uh, six inches long, 150 millimeters. And the reason why I made it this way is if you use it in an indexable tool post holder, uh, it's repeatable. You just leave it in the tool post holder and put it back in and it's all, it's all set, center height, everything. Because both of my machines got the same settings so I can swap tools between the machines. And um, I also machined this surface parallel to the shank so I can index on that one this surface is also fairly parallel it's a bit rough but it's actually parallel to the um, to the shaft as well um, the whole thing runs up to 8000 rpm which is a bit too slow for this small one but I've got bigger wheels which are actually bigger than this diameter so this gives me enough clearance um, I will build a smaller one because you can see this motor and this shaft is a bit smaller so I can use a smaller bearing 
which allows me for higher speed. This motor should do somewhere between 15 and 20,000 RPM. Depends on um, the supply voltage. So that's how it looks at the end. And the purpose of this video is actually showing how to get there. Total cost without the tool holder. Um, I would say 50 quid. Seventy dollars in total, and a bit of time, obviously. This is a prototype. Basically, just a feasibility study. If it's possible to do it this way, and I fitted it on the lathe, and I think I, I cut another ten millimeters off this way, so to come a little bit closer. Um, the idea is actually not just using it on the lathe, uh, you can use it on, as a spindle on a rotor. Uh, it runs very true. I'm surprised by this um, collar chunks here, they are really good quality, even they come from China. Uh, I don't know how hard they are, but uh, we'll see. So the next one will be a smaller one with a smaller square and this smaller shaft. And once I find a affordable source for ER8 collets, I make an ER8 one as well, which will be even smaller. So that will give us the opportunity to do some ID grinding on small parts. You could do it with that one, but uh, the problem is, once you reach the end of the shank here, um, you're done. And for small, um, for small grindstones, this is too slow, but the motor. The motor will do more, but the problem is these ESC controllers, they don't like more than about 14 volts, otherwise you can fry it. The motor is 900, and 900 RPM per volt. I'm very happy with the result here. This thing is heavy, that's I think two kilos, um, which is what I wanted. I want something heavy because the Dremels and all these little things, they have no weight. And if you want to prevent from vibration, you need mass. And this thing has significant mass, so. Bit of prettifying and uh, we're good to go. Later on I'm gonna do a speed measurement on that one. So yeah, let's see how we get there. And uh, obviously there are some lessons learned. The next one will be a bit quicker and easier. But uh, it's good to see go going from there to there. And I thought that's what a video. Thank you.